Shoo! What's going on, folks? Welcome back to another episode. Lucy, Millie, what, what are you guys doing? You hanging out in the mini truck? Hey, you want to get out here? I'll let you. Hang on, give me a second. Give me one second. Hey, uh, Luke. Really? Now, now go ahead, go ahead. There you go. Hey, how's it going, folks? Welcome back to another episode. This is a beautiful day out here. Llama! What? Why are there so many animals on this side? Actually, this is good. This is what I want, because it'll be a lot easier to feed these guys, because they'll be spread out. There won't be so many animals. They've got three feeders here, and they've got a whole bunch. Jerry! How's it going, Jerry? Well, we need to feed these guys, get them all grub dubbed up, and uh, because they're hungry. They're always freaking hungry, but let's go ahead and give these guys, Jimothy, I'll be with you in a second there, buddy. Well, we brought the mini truck down. I am still rocking the solo vlogs from having COVID-19, okay? Still have it. Starting to get my taste and smell back uh, slowly, but I still have it, so we're riding solo. No banjo, no pool jet. There you go. There you go, you get some in there, Jerry and Rick right here. Yep, and I'm gonna go give some to these other animals so they don't try to run around. That way they know, hey, you stay right here, Dale. Right here. Eat a little bit. Yeah, eat a little bit there. Yeah, yeah, there you go. All right, I'll be back with a lot more. Just relax, okay? Just calm, hey, calm down. Carol, you, you need to calm down, buddy. You want some of that grain? You want some of the good stuff, buddy? How you been? I haven't petted you in a while, Carol. Hey, relax, Rick. Hey, all right, let's give these guys some more. Yeah, Jerry, watch out. Right there, buddy. Yeah. There you go. Let's get some in this trough here. There you go, Rick. Yeah. Get some in here. There you go. There you go, llama. You want a little? You want a little bite? There. Let's get. I'll get you some more. Here you go. Cheese and rice. It's just always chaos out here. Everybody's dying out here, thinking they're dying. They're not dying. They just they love themselves some grain. So we're gonna go ahead and get these guys taken care of, like we do every day, making sure nobody's dead. Everybody's got proper nutrition and all that fun stuff. Llama. Here. Here's a full scoop. There you go, buddy. Here. There's a little bit more. I'll put some over here. Here. There you go, buddy. You, what? You do not want it or do you want it or not, llama? All right, well, if you don't want it, I'll go give it to somebody else. There you go, buddy. There you go. See, it is a lot less chaotic though. Having these animals split up, it is kind of nice because now everybody able to get some food. Even you, Carlos. Carlos, how you doing there, buddy? Even Carlos is able to fend for himself to get himself some of that grain. Rick, you want some more, buddy? Turkey. Hey, you want some more? There you go. Oh, pig, chill, chill, chill. Here you go, Carol. There you go, buddy. All right, here you go. This is for all the guineas and ducks. Yeet. Look at them. Look at them. They know the drill. They're hanging in there. Look at them. They're all munching away, just doing bird things. Here you go, llama. That's all for you, buddy. Eat up before somebody comes and tries to take it from you, all right? Yeah, that's a good llama. You like that grain, buddy? Anyways, hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Uh, just starting the day off normal chores. We got, hey, calm down. Hey, Jerry, be nice to the pig. There's plenty. There's literally plenty to go around. We got a nice little ass over there. D Dale, that was llama's dish. Dale, 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 hey, right here. Here you go, Dale. You want some? Here you go, llama. That's for you, buddy. The little ass is doing great. She's, uh, she's chill. We haven't officially named her. I just haven't seen anything that I loved, but look at her. She's doing donkey things over there, just, just chilling. But, uh, anyways, how's it going, sheep? Sheep, I already gave everybody the grain. You gotta go find the dish. I don't, I don't have it with me anymore. There's, there's like six dishes that you, you can choose from if you want, you know what I'm saying? Go, go get you some. Go get you some grain. Come on. Sheep, I ain't giving you any more. I already gave everybody enough. Dale, uh, Dale's in Llama's dish again. Dale, I gave, Dale, I gave you some, Dale. Hey, I give it to Llama because Llama doesn't like eating from the dishes. Hey, 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 here you go, Llama. I'll hold it for you. We'll keep we'll keep Dale away. Got to make sure my Llama's properly fed, you know what I'm saying? Steve, why don't you want grain, Steve? You don't, what? You don't like it anymore? Okay, if you don't like it, I'll just, I'll give these guys a little bit more. I'm being extra nice today, giving everybody extra grain. Make sure everybody's nice and full. Full, tell me, hey, pig, you want some more? There, put some right there for you, pigs. Oh, Jerry, you get in there if you want. All right, that is plenty of grain for everybody to live off of and not die for one freaking day. But hopefully you guys have a fantastic day. I'm starting the day off feeding everybody. But our plant, Lucy, hey, leave Chungus alone. Chungus, Chungus is probably hungry. You just calm down. Our plan today is to do a little bit of potential duck hunting. We're not sure if it's going to work or not. I'm by myself, so it's going to be a solo video. But um, if you guys remember, I bought a new boat and motor and then didn't use the boat, used a different new boat and used the mud motor. Lucy. 
Quit barking at Chungus. Anyways, as I was saying, I bought a new boat, bought a new motor. Didn't use the boat, used a different boat, put a mod motor on it, took it to the Martian, went hunting with pool jet, and it did not work. So, I ordered a brand new motor, same motor, but it's new. And I'm sure the other one can be fixed. Um, I just didn't want to take the time to fix it. I was like, I'll just get a new one. They're really not that expensive. They were a lot cheaper than I thought they'd be. Um, so, I ordered a new one, and it came fully assembled, at least to my knowledge, pretty much assembled. And so, I need to unbox it, get it hooked up on the boat. I need to go grab the trailer for the boat, put the boat on the trailer, put the motor on it, hook everything up, and then I'm going to take it to the backyard pond and test it don't test your motors while you're in the act of doing what you want to do so if you're testing a fishing motor don't don't plan a fishing trip to then test it if you know what i'm saying i went duck hunting to test it last time and it kind of botched the duck hunt because it didn't work so i'm going to test it in the backyard pond first assuming that it works in the backyard pond then tomorrow morning i'm going to go take it out by myself to a marsh and hopefully clap some duck cheeks so that being said all the animals you guys you're good to go no one no one's dying everybody's good to go all right so with that being said i will see you guys up at the shop where the motor is we got to put this thing together get it running and put it on the backyard pond hopefully it works you guys stay tuned Shoo! we made it into the shop but before we get started i forgot to mention that you guys should click the link down below if you guys are into duck hunting or like ducks merch we've got a whole bunch of new designs on the website right now and if you click the link down below and use promo code flare you get 10 percent off your entire purchase so if you guys want any ducks gear link down below and you get a discount promo code flare 10 percent off so here is the motor this right here is what will ship to my house it is pretty much identical to this guy right here which is the motor i bought off of facebook marketplace and it did not work. I don't know what the problem is. I'm sure somebody with just like minor mechanical abilities could probably figure it out, which is not me. Um, I have not taken the time to even like deal with it or anything like that. Basically, it didn't run. Went on the internet and I was like, wow, these aren't that expensive. So I just ordered a new one and I got it fully assembled, at least to my knowledge, uh, somewhat assembled just to make it easier for me because I knew once I get it, I'm going to want to take it hunting, which is what I'm going to do now. So we need to unbox this thing and there may not be too much to put together necessarily, but um, we need to just get it running. Put the gas in it, put the oil in it, make sure it's running so it's it's air cooled so you can run it out of the water and test it so i'm gonna basically get it running right here in the shop and then this is the boat that i want to take this is the new millie you like that water in there buddy this is one of my newer boats this is a low 1040 it is a duck oh lucy you want to go duck hunting buddy hey let go you ready you sit you sit fetch she found her bumper and she's all excited about it, even though we don't have any water, but good job, buddy. I would take Lucy tomorrow, but the fact that I'm going by myself and I'm trying to film it and she's not trained and I don't know if she'd be able to stand where I'm going, I might actually have to hunt out of the boat or I might be you know, up to my waist or chest in water, which she won't be able to stand. So I don't want, I, I, it's too much. I, I, if I go to this spot and it's really good and I wanna go back the next day or sometime later on this season, I'll take Lucy. But being that I'm by myself, it's gonna be hard enough to film this and hunt uh, by myself as is, let alone having a young little pup. So I'm not sure I'm going to take her with me, but this is going to be the boat. It's a 10 footer and it, it has the mount for that other motor. I don't know. I'm assuming since it's the same motor, it would be, it would be the same. It's kind of like a quick detach, which is nice. Um, so anyways, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get this guy on box teeter and see what we're dealing with, see what we're dangling with, try to get her together. And then we are going to take it for a heck of a test run on the pond to make sure it is up and running. Then we got to get all of our gear ready. I do have a bunch of new decoys. These are all brand new decoys. These haven't even been unpackaged yet they are mallard decoys fully flocked head never had nice decoys like this in my life they were on sale they were like 50 percent off so i went ahead and bought three dozen of them so i wouldn't have to worry about decoys this year because i bought a bunch of we got pintails in there we've got widgeons and that might be the only thing that's inside this one i'm not sure but um i think that's the only ones that are in there but then i bought a bunch of new teal ones for teal season but now it's big duck season so i want to make sure i got a bunch of mallard i don't think i'm gonna take all these because that's like freaking five six dozen you don't need that but you know maybe take two dozen take some spinner um and all that jazz but i need to get weights hooked up to these guys so you'll see me do that as well we've got some uh weights that came in and really Melee, you don't even like fetch why why are you harassing her you don't even you don't even play fetch i don't understand it anyway let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed Boom, there is the new engine. It looks a little bit different than that guy, but I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's the same brand. It looks pretty similar. I'm not, eh, kinda. Maybe this may not even be the same. It, it looks, it, I don't know. Either way, we are good to go um, with this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and try to, I'm gonna drag the boat in here and get it hooked up and then I'm gonna work on it from there because I'll be a little bit more familiar with it. So obviously fuel and oil are gonna be essential. This one's different though. This one has an air filter on the outside of it and this one, other one does not. So I'm not sure 
sure, again, I, that one, I was reading about this one and it said if it's emitting white bluish smoke, which that one was, it's something to do with the oil more than likely, either too much or something, something's messed up with it essentially. So that one just needs to be torn apart and put back together. I'm sure anybody with just like a little bit of knowledge would be able to do it, but we've got a new one to try to break this time. And it, this one actually has electric start, which is nice, even though I probably won't use it because I don't want to carry a battery with me. It's just another thing in the boat that I don't really want to have to deal with. So I'm assuming you got to put a battery on it. That's usually how boat motors work, but maybe not. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and drag the boat in from here and then install it. Looks like it's got the same mounting harness. So I'm going to pop that one off, put that one on, set the engine on it. Looks like that's the oil fill there, gas fill there. And I'm, I already read through the instructions. I didn't see anything that like dode out to me and was like, oh, that's whack. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of have at it. See if I can figure it out. I am not mechanically inclined with engines. I will say that like I, you, you want me to build something. Okay. Well, don't have me build something either, but I feel like I'm better off building something out of wood than I am working on. Like I know nothing about engines whatsoever. Like I've changed the oil in that mule once. And like, I thought I was freaking the coolest guy ever. But anyways, that being said, let's go ahead and drag the boat in here and see if we can get the motor mounted and get it fueled up, oiled up and ready to rock and roll. <music> Yeah, that was easy. I feel like I accomplished something. Luckily it came put together. It didn't look that it'd be that hard anyways, but we got it mounted. I did have to use some uh, boards here uh, as spacers and I just pinched them in there really good. So they're not coming out. I mean, ideally you would put a nice big block in there. You'd bolt it on there. Listen, guy, I don't follow the rules. I do the bare minimum. That's just how I do it. It's not coming out. It ain't going nowhere. Even if it did, you could probably still figure out a way to run it. It's just a little wobbly. The bolts, they didn't make them long enough to not have that spacer on the back. So made a little homemade one, pinched it in there real good. I don't think it's going anywhere. Lucy, I don't know if you guys see it. Lucy was super interested in the saw. She just, she didn't realize it was a saw. And so she kept sniffing it and trying to look in the wood and it just wouldn't have ended up uh, going that great for her. But motor is on, ready to go. So two more steps, I believe. We need to add some oil. So this is... I think this is where you add oil. Looks like it. Let's see if there's any in it. I don't think they ship it with any. Oh God. Oh, Rit. Rit. What? What the hell? Is there oil in? Who put oil in here? I mean, I know sometimes like engines and stuff come with a little bit of oil, but that literally like the, the oil fell out. It literally came out. Okay. Maybe I need to read the instructions a little bit more because uh, the oil is just, the oil is literally pouring out right now. Okay. All right. All right. Put that back on Lucy. Lucy, put that, Lucy, put the back on. Put it, Lucy, put it back on. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're getting oil everywhere. All right. Maybe I need to. Maybe that was, you think that was the drain? I feel like the drain wouldn't be, no, that drain, wouldn't, maybe that is the, I should probably read the instructions. One second. I mean, there's hella oil in there. I don't know what there else is to say about it. I don't know, it wasn't supposed to come with oil, they said, but there's oil. I mean, they say put it on a level surface, but I feel like we're, we're level. I mean, we're this way level, assuming they don't mean something else. I feel stupid if I try running it and then it seizes up because there wasn't oil, but there, there's oil, like it, it's full. I opened up the other side and it started gushing out. So I don't, and that's the one, it's got the stick on the end. So obviously that means like that's the place you're supposed to check it. And it was, it's full. Melly, come here, come here, Melly. What do you, what do you think? Do you think this is a good engine oil in here? Or did somebody, somebody done goof? They weren't supposed to ship it with oil. Or maybe since I ordered it put together, they did. Does that mean there's gas? No, there's no way they shipped it with gas. There's no way, right? I wouldn't assume they wouldn't ship it with gas. I don't see any gas. Let's go ahead and add gas and just get her fired up, see what happens. I mean, if they added oil, I mean, thanks, I guess. Just when you put in the instructions that warning did not ship with oil and then you shipped it with oil, it kind of throws your boy off, you know what I'm saying? So it's whatever, we'll just, we'll give her hell. Maybe once it's out run on the water, I'll do a second oil check, but it's full. I, I know it's not empty and it might be too full. I've done that before, too much oil. All of a sudden this son of a gun's gonna start billing white smoke. So we'll find out if they overfilled it or not, but this is ethanol free. free premium gasolina. We're gonna fill this sucker up here. Probably doesn't take very much. This thing barely even, hold, this ain't even hold a gallon. What is that thing, like a quart? Hopefully this thing's fuel efficient, otherwise I'm gonna be freaking stuck out on the marsh. All right, that's pretty much full if I'd say so myself. All right, so we've got oil apparently. Hopefully it's the right kind. Got fuel, good, neat, sick. Now, let's see, we're gonna follow this step by step. So that way if it, 
That way, if it doesn't work, I can blame them, not myself. So, engine oil, check. Fuel, check. Pre-operation inspection. Fuel, engine oil, yeah, I assume. Okay, open the fuel cock. Okay, well, that is a terrible picture. I'm not even gonna lie. What part is that? It literally says, you guys can see that. It literally says, open the fuel cock. Okay. Guessing it's somewhere leading down from the fuel line, or the fuel, not the fuel line, the fuel tank. If they would have given me a far out picture, that probably would have helped your boy. Okay, wait, it's this thing. Wait, oh god, rip. The bottom one? Oh, okay, so it's on and off. Fuel cock is on. And then next, turn engine switch to on position. Really? Okay. Oh, I need a key probably. I'm guessing, I mean, maybe if it's off, it's still, it's still, no, because you should, even if it's running with a pull start, you, uh, you probably can still turn it off, so. Yeah, so you need a battery. So it's on, okay, dope, on. Completely closed the choke valve. This top little thing right here. Closed. Move the throttle lever a little to open. Okay. Cleaning, no, all right. Let her rip, Junior. Oh, snap, okay. Yeah. Okay, maybe open the choke a little bit, maybe? Freaking rips! Was it really that easy? I feel like I missed something. That was easy peasy, folks. I feel like I did something big with my my life here. Okay. Well, she ran on land, if that makes sense. But so did that one. That one worked just fine until you put a load on it, and then it starts freaking out. That's what we got to do next. We've got everything ready to rock and roll. I need to run down to the pond and grab a trailer. I'm gonna come back with that trailer and put this boat on that trailer and then haul it down. Am I gonna do that? Yep, yeah, I'm gonna do it. And then haul it down to the pond, launch it in the pond and run this engine around and get the fuel. Cause I still need to adjust like the, like, you know, that th this thing is, it just, uh, it feels a little weird right now. I, it was nice. They, they made it to where I could switch to a lefty position. The handle came on this side. I don't know if you guys saw, but I switched it. So that way, being the old lefty that I am, I can sit here and freaking cruise like I, before I was like doing one of these doohickeys and that ain't it. So I got on the left side here. Wow, I'm impressed. I'm not gonna lie. But the, the, the real test has not come yet. I need to go down, get the trailer, come back a little bit on the trailer, take it down to the pond, launch it, run it around, fully break it in, test it, make sure it runs. And then I gotta start getting prepared for tomorrow and get my decoys ready to rock and roll. And then we're gonna be off and hunting tomorrow morning. So with that being said, I'm gonna go grab the trailer. See you guys in a minute. Folks, made it down to the pond. We got her all loaded up and ready to rock and roll. Oh, what are these wires doing dangling? It's like those aren't supposed to be up there like that. Probably should tuck them up in there before something grabs them. But we got the boat uh, ready to go. I couldn't figure out a great way to have, this is not the way to do this because it's 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 a little bouncy. Um, I tried taking it off and setting it down, but this, this freaking air filter, which I'm sure it serves a good purpose, but it wasn't on the last one and it doesn't allow you to it doesn't allow you to like set it down it's either resting on the handle on the shaft or this or a combination of multiple to where it can't just like right you can't just like set it down on its base and then strap it down not on the boat on a flat surface maybe but i couldn't really but i couldn't figure out how to get it to lay in here this is not how i'm going to travel with it to the marsh i'll probably just put it in the bed of my truck honestly and then just trailer the boat like this at that point you might as well just not use a trailer i use i wanted to put this on the trailer because i wanted to leave the the motor there since i'm by myself i mean the thing's not super light um it'd make it easier unless unless i can come up with a better way i just feel like putting all the all the weight on the handle isn't a great idea i mean it's i'll show you how it's connected it's it's one of these guys so it's not like it's gonna break anything but it i don't 
don't know a better way to do this. And I know a lot of people travel with the prop like flipped and turned in, which is how I was originally going to do it. But I can't remember what it was resting on or you couldn't, it, it was fine, except I couldn't figure out how to strap it down because the shaft goes down and the handle goes up. So since the handle goes up, I could press it down. But if it already is facing down, there was no way to strap it down. I'm sure I can go with a better way, but ideally I would love to travel just like this or at least have the motor flip and then do a quick little 180 on it, back it in the water and take off instead of grabbing the motor out from my truck and then that occupies bed space and I'm just blabbering at this point. But we're going to launch this boat. This is the first boat we've launched since we redid the boat ramp. So, I mean, luckily this is a really, really light boat, so we shouldn't have too many issues. I already see a couple issues. Uh, that's a big divot right there. So I know I'm probably going to sink in there, but I mean, this boat doesn't even need a trailer. Honestly, you saw me pick it up. It's really not that big of a deal. But anyways, get this boat in the water and I'm going to take the doggos with me. Lucy, Millie, you excited? And we're going to do a little rippy rippy around and see what happens. You guys stay tuned. Get the boat. Get the boat. Go. Get the boat. God, there you go. All right. This boat's hilarious. I love it. It's it's such a small, easy to use boat. But when it's what, it is slippery. All right, I'm coming in, Millie. Better watch out, buddy. Brace yourself. All right. I did forget this thing does not have reverse, so I need to position myself properly. I didn't bring the tripod in here because if I try to tripod the if I try to tripod the camera, the dogs are gonna knock in the water. So let's see if I can get this thing started. This thing's scary, dude. I think this is a seven horsepower, and I was like, whatever. I mean, it's not like I have to go fast. I kind of want to, I low-key want to get the dogs out and set the camera out uh, on, on land so it doesn't get wet and see how fast I can go. Like, this thing, I was barely squeezing the throttle on, and it was ripping. Whew. All right, well, better fire it up before I get pinched because I, like I said, this thing doesn't, doesn't have reverse, so I got to turn around real quick. This thing's scary. I cannot take Lucy tomorrow. There's no way. This thing is insanely fast. All right, I'm going to get it up on shore, get the dogs out, set the camera up, and see what this thing's made of. Land ho, Melly. Brace yourself. Okay, get out. Come on, get out. Get out. Come on. No, 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 no. Uh, okay, we got grass. Come on, let's go. Get out. Let's get out of the boat. Come on. Come on, Lucy. Let's go. Come on. Come on, Millie. Good girl. All right. Shoo! This thing's this thing's deadly. This is whew, This is dangerous. All right. Well, I'm gonna set the camera off. Hopefully, the dogs stay away, and we're gonna give her hell. Well, <laughs> this thing is fun. It's really hard to control. I'll be honest. So, like, I am, I am pretty intimidated. I don't know if I don't know if I'd ever be able to bring Lucy because she just. I would be afraid she'd jump in the water and I wouldn't be able to shut the motor off in time. Or it's it's okay. Um, but I would say two beefcakes max in that little guy. But look at it. That's just the old duck killing machine right there, son. That's the old solo low 1040, the old mud motor on it. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, Lucy, Lucy, what are you doing there, buddy? We're gonna go ahead and get this back up on the trailer, take it up top. And we got to get our all of our decoys and stuff rigged up. Uh, we get some weights on them and make sure everything's charged and ready to rock and roll for the AM. So, see you guys back up at the shop.
look at all those beautiful looking decoys. Absolutely freaking gorgeous. We got three dozen right there. And then like I said before, oh yeah, there's wood ducks in here. So we have woodies, gaddies, widgeons, and pintails in there. So I think for tomorrow, I mean, I don't need to take all of those for sure, plus that, plus I have a bunch of teal decoys. I'm thinking the strat is one dozen mallards, whatever's in that box, that's just puddle ducks, and then maybe a few teal. I mean, that to me, that seems like more than enough, maybe a little excessive, but I'm by myself, it's not like I don't have the room in the boat for the decoy, so probably bring a total of like between 25 and between two and three dozen, let's just call it that. We got a dozen mallard, probably a dozen puddle ducks, and a dozen teal, and then I've got two mallard spinning wing decoys is like these guys right here so i'll bring both of those and then i do have i have two teal so i'll probably bring one teal i mean again i know this is a lot of gear but i just bought it all so i kind of want to i kind of want to like use it i i didn't buy all this not to have it especially since i've got the room it is a lot of decoys for me to set on pick up on myself but I, I mean it takes literally like 10 minutes it's not that big of a deal so with that being said i'm pretty sure i got everything ready to rock and roll i'm gonna go ahead and load up i gotta un offload that off of the mule and then i'm gonna load my truck up with all the decoys pews the shells the ducks duck call that's going to be key for tomorrow and all the other gear and load it up in the truck and then tomorrow morning i'm going to set sail by myself solo covid hunting and some of you guys commenting i don't know if any guys would say this but just in case you are saying that i've got corona and i'm going out and about listen rick i'm going to a public marsh by myself and if there's anyone else there I just won't talk to them. And if they come over to me, I'll say, listen, Rick, I have Corona. So unless you're trying to die, I'd back up. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I know some of you guys are thinking, oh, Flair, you just need to sit inside your house uh, until COVID passes. And the thing is, I've at this point, point like today i have my smell back i have my taste back i have no symptoms so i know you're supposed to you know do the 10 to 14 day thing which i'm gonna do i'm, I'm still not having pool dry awesome come until then but you know as far as like the actual contagious part, i'm not symptomatic let's call it that i'm not right as of right now i'm not symptomatic doesn't mean i'm not contagious i'm just not symptomatic so i am going hunting i'm not gonna talk to anybody i'm not gonna go into some other someone else's decoy spread and go harass them and start sneezing on their on their spinning wings and stuff okay gonna do it responsibly but just because i've got corona doesn't mean I can't live my best life. Well, uh, I mean, actually it does. I, there's a lot of things I can't do that I wish I could do, but this is one of those things that I am going to do. Um, even though I've got COVID, I'm still going to go ahead and go through with it. Like I said, I'm going by myself. I'm not going to the gas station before. I'm literally not going anywhere. I'm going from my house to the marsh and back. That is it. Hopefully I get some birds down on the ground tomorrow. I will see you guys in the morning. Shoo! Well, folks, made it out to the marsh. Right now, it is 4.57 a.m. That is two hours-ish before shooting time, and I made it out here first. It's the first time this year that I've been first to the marsh. Um, I got up literally at least an hour earlier than I needed to um, to make sure that I was going to be here. Not, I don't really care if I'm first, but I want to make sure I get the right spot, the spot that I want. So I am, in fact, here first. It's freaking freezing. I did not... I did not expect this. It is super windy, so I'm going to apologize in advance for the wind noise because I know it's not going to be uh, probably very pleasant. But as you can see, we've got the boat. She is ready to rock and roll. We got to get her loaded up. Tons of decoys, lots of gear. I'm by myself. Ooh, I got a, I got a zip of this little duck's vest. I'm freaking cold out here. It's the wind. It just, it just goes right through. Yeah, this is. Ooh. Well, I mean, it should be good for the hunting, though. It should bring the ducks in, and the wind should really help the direction of them landing and stuff like that. It's the first time I've hunted this year where it's been windy like this and cold. So with that being said, let's get the boat loaded up. Look at that. Loaded up with decoys. We got the old lion bag, got the old spinners. Marsh seat, maybe gonna use that, not sure. And the motor, which is still pointed this way, that way when I launch it, it doesn't hit the ground and stuff like that. So we're all loaded up. We are ready to rock and roll. And uh, honestly though, I'm gonna probably sit in the truck until somebody shows up. Cause as soon as someone shows up, all I gotta do is back the boat in, jump in and I'll beat them, but I don't really want to go sit in the marsh by myself when it's freezing cold outside for two hours uh, for no reason. So I think I'm just going to chill in the truck for a little bit. The boat's ready to go. As soon as I see headlights, I'm going to jump in, rip to the northwest. 
hopefully get on damn birds. You guys stay tuned. Boats in the water, folks. Look at that. That is just a beauty setup. I'm in love with the setup. No one has showed up yet. I just actually, I just got anxious and launched. Uh, that way, when someone shows up, I literally have to jump in the boat and go. And I don't, they don't have to worry about me backing in the boat by myself. And I also don't want to talk to anybody because uh, obviously I still have Corona. At least I think I still have it. I mean, since I got tested, uh, the duration of you know when you're supposed to quarantine stuff is not it's not over yet. So. Um, I feel fine. I don't, I mean, I got stuffy nose, a little runny nose. Probably doesn't help to hunt. It's freezing cold outside, uh, in order to heal. But listen, I'm here to, I'm here to clap duck cheeks. It's what I'm here to do. And, uh, the old, the old boat's ready to rock and roll. And I'll probably give it, oh, there's a car. Never mind. I'm leaving. Look at this pocket right here, boys. I think this is gonna do it. See, we got the south wind. Actually, I'm gonna go sit over there. That way they come and land right, right over there. Woo, this boat works slick though. Tell you what, we got we got here in a freaking jiffy. I know this lighting's probably not good. I'm sorry, I apologize, but <laughs> this boat's freaking sick. This is the rig. You public land duck hunters, this is the deal here. So anyways, I'm gonna go over there and uh, start getting set up. You guys stay tuned. Shoo! Well, folks, hopefully you can see me. This thing's freaking bright. Well, I got all the decoys set up. I didn't really film much because I'm by myself and I want to make sure I got them all out. But this is my teal spread. Okay, so I've got three of those little spinning things and then three, six, nine, 12, 14, it looks like. So a little more than a dozen. And then I've got one spinning wing teal. So this is a little pod for teal. Okay, I just separated them. Um, we've got a strong south wind. So normally when you have a strong wind, I do a V formation. Um, and then I stand in the, like, the, the V part, the like the point. And that way it kind of funnels them in. You kind of have an arm to the right and left and they should land in the middle. So that's where I'm gonna stand. I'm gonna hide the boat and I'm gonna stand here. So to my left is that little teal pocket. Now I've been hearing teal all morning. Uh, so this sounds stupid. But I don't want to limit out on teal, okay? It's not early teal season. This is big duck season. I want to shoot some big ducks, some pintails, gaddies, widgeons, maybe mallards, even spoonie, something other than teal. So you may see me pass on some teal. I mean, obviously I'm gonna let a few rip um, just in case there's nothing else, but I've heard a lot of teal, so I don't really want to limit out on teal if I can help it. But then, so I'm sitting here. Over here is where I've got all the big decoys. So I've got one spinning wing up there and then one over there and mallards gaddies widgeon and pintail i have all kind of mixed in through here so you can see i'm gonna stand there and that's one long arm they are close together i know but ducks hang out close together and then i've got this open pocket and then a little pot over there so i'm sorry i'm planning on standing in the middle um of these two that way if something lands on the left of me i can shoot the right shoot in front shoot the only place i can't shoot is really behind me so but i've got a strong south wind at my back so i shouldn't i shouldn't be shooting behind me they should be landing from the north right here in front of me whether it's over there in the middle over there i'm gonna have a shot oh and i have uh in the middle there the little pumper duck so i do have a little pumper duck to splash some water around so anyways i can tell i still have corona because i'm getting winded just talking which i know i'm not in the greatest shape but it's a little bit more than it usually is i can tell you that much so um anyways i'm gonna go ahead and hide the boat a little bit we've got about 40 to 45 minutes before shooting light. Um, I don't even know if there's anyone else out here. I, I told you I saw headlights. They were my own headlights. I'm a freaking idiot because I left my truck running when I parked it up top because uh, I was going to go sit back in it. So I sat in it for like another 20 minutes and then I jumped in the boat and I have yet to hear anybody else. So I might have this entire march by myself, which honestly is not a great thing uh, because then that means as soon as I start shooting, all the birds are just going to go somewhere else because it's a big marsh. But at the same time, uh, I, all I need is six. So, you know, two, two to three decent sized groups and poppies out and headed a Go make some breakfast at home or something. So anyways, we're gonna go hide the boat and uh, see you guys at shooting time. Alrighty folks, well, we've got four minutes until shooting time. And uh, as you can tell, it's still freaking dark out here and I'm wearing a GoPro so I can try to get some shots, but don't expect much out of this guy for about 45 minutes. The low light on this is pretty garbage, but this camera's decent. So I set you guys up on a tripod behind me. That way you can, Oh, those duck. Those are like 3,000 birds start flying. I could hear them. I don't know if those are ducks or not, but I've seen a couple. Nothing's landed in the decoys yet. There's two right in front. There's two 
two two ducks right there I, i'm feeling pretty good i'm not gonna lie this is uh it's looking to work out pretty good we've got a good wind yeah there's two ducks right back there too like i said i'm hoping not to limit out on teal but at the same time like i'm here to i'm, I'm here to clap duck cheeks okay so you know the first few could be teal I, you know i'm gonna try to save you know maybe i'll shoot three or four and then save those last two for some bigger ducks just to get some variety i don't know if i'll be coming out here any any more throughout the season otherwise i'll be probably down at the farm but anyways that's the update um i'm gonna do my best to film it for you guys i know it is no pool jet production you're not gonna get dope slow-mo kill shots and stuff because i'm by myself but i'm gonna do what i can hopefully you guys are enjoying the solo vlogs um we'll be back to the normal pool jet banjo uh, vlogs here soon but i'm gonna make the most of it and try to class some duck cheeks so you guys stay tuned 10 seconds we haven't had any land in the decoys though i've seen lots of birds which is good but nothing's landed they probably can't see anything either though it's freaking dark oh and it's shooting time your boys buckle up it's about to get good there's one right here one right here one right here come on come on oh you're kidding me oh frick i didn't load the gun son rip that was the easiest shot of the freaking century I didn't even load the pew. You gotta be kidding me, that was a floater. That was a lob, the, the duck lobbed in. Rip, that was a big duck too. Absolute rip though. I mean, there'll be more, but come on, that was a that was a perfect shot. Oh, it's close. A lot of them are skirting to the right, so I might end up just walking over there in a minute. Oh, there's one right here. Oh my god, did you see how close that one got? I couldn't see him, it was too dark. I didn't want to blow his head off. Did you see how close that guy got? I lost him right here. Couldn't see him. And I didn't I literally did not want to blow him to shreds. I'm sorry. <laughs> you might as well be like, Flair's the first time duck hunt. No, it's not. Surprisingly. That was a teal. I don't feel too bad. But I, I lost him. He got so low. I was like, I want to make sure I get a good first shot, knock him down clean. By the time I saw him, he was four inches from my freaking barrel. I'm not trying to tenderize the meat prior to getting home. Got him. Got him. Got him. All right. Let's go get this guy. One down, baby. <sighs> All right. Woo. Thank God. Woo. It's cold. I'll tell you what. I am not that warm. I underestimated how cold it's going to be. I'm not wearing the right waders. I'm wearing some really, really lightweight waders. So my legs are pretty, pretty numb. Thank God we got one down. It's a big duck too, son. Let's go. Shoo! First one, baby. Let's go. That'd be a female pintail there, son. You guys can't see it very well, but solo pintail. Right there. Shoo! First penny of the season. Oh, God. This Rona's got me freaking winded. I'm not going to lie right now. Woo -hoo -hoo. Of course, now I don't see any birds flying, but hopefully they'll start waking up here. There was a lot flying early, but it's still early. See, the sun's not even up yet. Shoo! Oh, I should already have three. <laughs> I should be halfway to my limit right now. Oh, if I didn't click on the first one, would have blew that teal's head off. And then this guy, I should have been halfway to a limit. That's all right. You win some, you lose some, folks. Either way, today's a success. Took the new boat out with the new motor, clapped a duck. That's what it's all about, baby. Shoo! Oh, there you go, folks first duck of the day first big duck of the season absolutely gorgeous guy right there well, we got one down i was saying i should be uh <laughs> should be halfway to my limit now first duck should have been down that teal should have been down and then this guy but that's all right dude oh i'm just gas walking this is this is insane the shortness of breath the shortness of breath symptom this thing's no joke the one thing that's interesting though nothing wants to land at all all passing shop that teal was as close as it got but it still kept going like without even seeing me which what do you do i feel like i'm in a really good spot it's a big big open pocket in the middle of a giant marsh i'm away from anyone else if there is anyone else out here i don't think there is nothing wants to land and it's so windy usually on a day like today where it's windy this is when you would have them land because they don't want to fly around it's freaking windy would you want to go flap your wings in the wind do you want to run against the wind me neither this place has been hunted pretty hard though so i could see how they're a little bit timid especially with all the motion decoys i have but i mean 
to me i feel like they can't hurt i mean it's still early season it's not like these are late season educated birds or anything so i feel like they can't be too decoy shy i mean i've got a good amount of decoys out here three dozen three spinners a pumper duck two of the little spinny disc things it's a lot going on but i figured if i'm going to compete with these people which there's nobody out here i'm going to need a big spread a lot of motion make it look like i've got the juice to be if i was a duck i've got the juice you know anyways that's all I've got right now. I just saw a pintail. Can't shoot him. Limit is one. I already got one. Unfortunately, it was a hen. But um, it is what it is. So no more pennies. Single. Yes, sir. Come to Papa. That's your green wing teal, son. That's the first green wing of the year, saying. Yes, sir. That was a close shot. A little head shot, too. Here, Rick. Look at that. Green wing. Single. He came in perfect. He did it dirty, son. Well, there's a group of three mallards working, but I'm taking what I can get. Green wing teal. First green wing of the year. I've only shot blue wing, so I'll take it. <laughs> yep. Ooh. It's like I speak duck. Let's go, baby. Got him. Called that one in from a mile away. That was a far shot. I could have waited, got it closer, but I was afraid it was gonna see me in flare. Ha, <laughs> get it? That'd be Mr. Widgeon. The old Widgeon right there. White belly Widgeon. Shoo! Look at that. First Widgeon. Got a penny, Widgeon, and a green wing. That's what I love about the early big duck season. I love nothing more than clapping mallards, don't get me wrong. I love the variety. I feel like you just never know what you're gonna get. There's all sorts of stuff flying around here. That's number three. So I think the sun's only been up for about 30 minutes. I'm averaging one every 10 minutes. Take it, should be out of here in an hour. Oh, what's that guy doing? Ooh, that guy was real low. <laughs> I'm tempted to, I don't want to miss the birds on this side, but oh, what's this guy? <sighs> I could have taken the poke, but I don't want to wound any birds. I don't have a dog, I don't have other people to help me look for them if they land in the reeds. So I want to make sure when I, Take a shot, it's it's clean and clear. That was that was tough, especially a Drake Wood Duck. Those things are freaking beautiful. That was a tough one, but he gets a pass for today. <laughs> gotcha. That was a high shot. That's what I needed though. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was the old solo high shot, baby. I'll take it. I'll take it. That makes four. Let's go, baby. Number four. Yes, sir. -y. Look at that guy. Woo! That'd be the old Gaddy. The Gaddy McFaddy. I'll take that right there, baby. Look at that. Four ducks, four different species. Gaddy, Widgeon, Pintail, and Teal. Gotta love it. Woo! He was just floating right above me. I wasn't even paying attention. I saw a three teal buzz right next to me that I could have shot. I didn't see him until it was too late. I looked straight up and Jimmy's just hovering. Took advantage and let her eat. Shoo! What up, boys? That'd be number four. It's the old Gaddy. Gaddy McFaddy. I'll take it. All right, two more to go. The good news, I haven't shot anything um, that has a strict limit except for the penny. I can't shoot any pennies, but Gaddy's, Widgeon's, six, teal six. So the good news is, unless it's a pintail and it comes in, I can, I can let her eat. Let's get a quick time check here. We've been shooting for a total of 40 minutes, exactly. So I've averaged 10 minutes a bird. That's what I said, 10 minutes a bird. That is not bad. We should, should hopefully be done in 20 minutes. I mean, all we need is a group of, uh, you know, a couple of teal pop in, making it easy or something. We'll be wrapped up and go eat some breakfast or something. Two more, dos mas por favor. If I would have just shot, that first one, okay, that I didn't have a shelling for, and then I would that teal that came and sniffed my barrel, I would be I'd be packing up the, the bags right now. I'd be packing up the decoys, bird watching. Sma didn't capitalize, baby. That's what happens. That's all right. Again, it's only been 45 minutes. I'm still about five minutes until the next bird's supposed to come. So hopefully we get a couple more in and get the old limit. One thing I've noticed though is there's no groups of ducks like literally every bird that's come in has pr pretty much been by itself i don't think i've sh even shot at a flock that i can think of right now i think i've only shot singles which usually indicates that th this has had some pressure hunting you know the birds aren't comfortable they're not flying in groups they're kind of 
they're they're sparse they're spread out at least that's my theory i mean i could be just completely making this up right now but you know anytime that i've hunted a, a non-pressured spot like being opener at the farm on private property like there are swaths of ducks that are just chilling together and then after a few days of hunting you kind of bust up the groups they kind of split off and do their own thing and that seems to be the case today which is it's interesting I, again i my theory is it's because this place has been hunted really hard over the last few days um this is not opener by any means this place has been pounded for for quite a while now there's still a lot of ducks and early early on this morning there was groups but none of no groups came near me and then since you know basically before sunrise there's been no groups you know i've had those three teal that came buzzing but i mean i wouldn't even consider that really a group usually you've got five six seven sometimes teal you're 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 racking in 20 to 50 teal big clouds of them it doesn't seem to be the case today so I might hear a coot running around so i might go smack that for the old lunch break but sounds like he's pretty far i don't feel like walking that far wow there's literally nothing flying right now this happens a lot in duck hunting though like it's good early early and then they have, they take like they take maybe they're eating breakfast and it's usually if i'm cooking if i'm cooking bacon that the ducks usually come right back but unfortunately i didn't bring the griddle out here all right that's the new angle that way the sun set my face and I'm not just a silhouette. I'm hoping I don't have to go, uh, I guess I could go sit over there. Hoping I don't have to like cover up too bad with this sun hit me. Uh, birds are gonna see me pretty good now, but I was hoping to get those last two before the sun got up, but I might have to go stand with the sun on my back, which I'd still probably be able to shoot birds. Just have to switch directions. Actually, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be that bad of a spot. I'm looking over there where the sun's coming up. There's a nice little hole. And honestly, a lot of the ducks that I have coming in are coming from the right side. So I'd be closer to them. Granted, if they swing to the left, actually, I'm just gonna move. I'm gonna quit talking about it i'll leave my bird pile on the marsh seat here and i'm gonna i'm gonna go walk that way if they come in i mean right now they're few and far between that way if they do come in i don't have to worry about them seeing me because the sun will be right on my back they ain't gonna see nothing all right now now you guys should have good lighting i'm gonna be covered with shadows so that's good i should have sat here to begin with this is a way better spot because i can see wow i should have sat here earlier i can see so much better i thought the birds the birds don't care about the wind today honestly i mean they've been flying into the wind but they're not landing so it doesn't really matter but i can see so much more on both sides which is where they've been coming from the north and the south here and that way i've got i can swing so as long as they basically fly to the west of me i should have a good shot anyways where the heck are the birds though they stopped flying i don't know what the strat is here all i know is i'm pretty cold this uh every time i shoot a bird i get a little burst of adrenaline and then nothing hopefully you guys are enjoying the solo i i know I, i'm just i got no one else to talk to so i'm talking to you guys so sorry if i'm just like literally talking about nothing but i appreciate you guys tuning in i know the the vlogs have not been the same since i tested positive for corona throwing a little bit of a wrench in some plans i had with the boys but postpone no big deal give it a couple weeks we'll be all right i still wanted to make the most of it since i'm i'm in my mind, in good health, I feel fine. I feel totally fine. I wanted to make the most of it and go out and do some adventures. You know, we've done the pond building series. Obviously, we're duck hunting some other stuff. But I know that the videos probably don't have quite the same vibe, you know, with Banjo and the back chasing chickens and Pole Jet just basically being the smartest one out of the bunch, telling us how to build stuff, you know, that type of deal. But anyways, just wanted to say thanks for tuning in. Since I'm by myself, I ain't got nobody else to talk to or hanging out with, so I'm hanging out with you guys. Well, since there's no ducks flying, I figured I'd give you guys a quick loadout on my fit right now. Okay, so at the base, got a normal t-shirt on. But then below that, I've got the duck's quarter zip. See that guy right there? And then I've got the duck's blades hoodie. That's the main thing that I'm wearing that's keeping me warm. And then I've got this vest. So this vest is a duck's product. It's a duck's vest. And I really like them because it leaves your arms mobile. You ever wear a big coat? Can't put your arms down? Kind of like that dude off the Christmas story. Yeah, you don't want to be that guy, right? You don't want to be the Michelin man. So what you do is you layer up. Like I said, I've got t-shirt, I've got a quarter zip, and I've got the hoodie. So my core is warm. When I talk about me being cold, it's not it's not my body. It's or it's my body. It's not my main torso. It's my legs because I wore freaking lightweight work pants with uninsulated waders. Not the best strap, but this vest will keep you super super warm. It's wind resistant. I don't feel any of the wind cutting through it, and it allows your your arms to be free so you can move your gun around and stuff you're not bulked up that's that's the biggest pain with duck hunting especially when it's cold is having so much so many layers you feel like you're just the michelin man walking around so that's the loadout and then i've got the blades hat on so i'm bladed out because you know why i'm hunting in the freaking blades now these blades are a little bit little bit more green not too bad i mean there's some green in there a little bit green you know give it two weeks and I'll be, I'll be looking like a bush but that's pretty much my loadout and then i've got the ducks goose call and duck call Right here, that's what I've been blowing all day. Oh, right here. <laughs> Anyways, what I was saying was uh, blowing the duck skull, got the hat, got the vest, keeping you warm, hoodie, quarter zip, 
all the good stuff, all the good stuff you need. And if I wanted to keep my legs warm, I should have wore the Ducks joggers. Super, super warm, thermal joggers. They're amazing. I didn't think it was gonna be that cold today. Uh, water's a little chillier than the air. But anyways, that's what I'm wearing and it'll all be linked down below if you guys wanna go check it out. Like I said at the beginning of the video, 10% off using promo code Flare linked down below. Get geared up, even if you don't like duck hunting and you like the logo, you think it looks dope and you just wanna stay warm and look freaking swagalicious. That was a terrible word. It'll be linked down below if you guys wanna check it out. 10% off, promo code Flare. So, where the heck did the birds go? Alrighty folks, well, I have yet to see a duck in the last 25 minutes, which I, I already know what's gonna happen. There's gonna be a late morning flight. Um, right now it's 8 a.m. That late morning flight ain't happening until at least nine, maybe 10. I'm not gonna lie, legs are pretty cold, so I'm actually gonna go for a walk, leave my gear, well, take my pew, but leave the gear and kind of start, just kind of wander around. We got a really strong wind, so I think I can use it to my advantage if I head upwind. Um, towards into the wind that way if there's birds they won't hear me because the wind's blowing and I might have the potential to you know stumble upon a few or you know bump a couple or something like that I don't know I mean nothing there's nothing flying I've got nothing to lose there's nobody else out here so it's not like I'm gonna go mess up anyone else's hunt so I'm gonna go ahead and go for a little jaunt and see what happens all right here goes nothing boys I'm gonna head uh am I headed south yeah I'm headed south headed south into the wind I'm sure they'll all just dump into the decoys when I'm doing this, but so I've got nothing to lose. There's no birds flying. I hear them flying. I hear them, I hear them on whistling and stuff, woodies. Sorry if the wind noise sucks too, but I'm gonna go ahead and be quiet and see if I can find a bird or two. Ah, oh, there's a coot. I mean, I guess I could shoot a coot. They don't really taste very good though. They have a limit of 15 though. Get a rack of a bunch. This is a nice pocket. I might hunt this next time. It's a little bit more, uh, like solid, there's less jetties and stuff. It's just a, a pond essentially. No ducks out here, but that's, that's a cool looking spot. Yeah, I think you could also sit on that island too and hunt from there. Oh, nothing, huh? Yeah, I'm not gonna walk any further. Get too far away, birds start flying, but I wanted to check out this pocket. I knew this pocket was over here, but I'd never hunted it before. So now that I know, I might have to try it one time, but whew. It is a freaking workout, I'll tell you what. And the birds still aren't flying. Well, birds aren't flying still. I'm gonna head back to the boat. I got a muffin in my bag, getting kind of hungry. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a break. I mean, the boat's still here, so all my, my spread's still out here. I mean, if I start seeing them fly, I'll jump out, but I gotta get in that boat to get out of this water. It's freaking cold. So take a little break, and uh, hopefully the birds start flying in a bit. Well, folks, I give up. Well, I waited an hour, didn't see anything. Now I know, the late flight's probably gonna happen with the next hour, but it's it's pretty chilly. Uh, I warmed up when I was inside the boat, but now that I'm back in the water, it's a little cold. And I mean, I shot some birds. What's two more ducks? It's not that big of a deal. Um, you know, I shot four. Should have had should have had a limit. That first duck, big duck, uh, clicked, didn't load it, and the second duck was a teal. Oh wow, that wind's neat. I'm sure that audio is great. Uh, the second duck was a teal and I didn't shoot because it was too close. Should have just done it. Um, anyways, I got to pick up. If you're wondering, there's my spread. Uh, basically, like I had all the big ducks here. And then over there's my pocket of teal. So now that's light, this is the setup. You guys can see kind of, I was back here in this little pocket. Well, you guys enjoy the time of me picking up decoys. Looky there folks, we got her all loaded up, ready to rock and roll and head back. Uh, record time, 13 minutes folks, 13 freaking minutes. Uh, so those of you guys are saying that this amount of gear is overkill, especially for a solo hunt, 13 minutes uh, for a pickup, it's not bad by yourself. I mean, set out time's probably even less than that. We're gonna call it, I, I mean, for some crazy reason, I don't know how, but I have not seen a duck since I started picking up. Like normally, you start picking up and boom, all of a sudden the ducks just start falling from the heavens. They don't wanna get up. I think it's too windy. They got up in the morning um, from their roost. They found out where they wanted to go chill out for the day and they're not gonna move until tonight. I mean, I'm sure there'll be a late, late morning flight, but again, I'm not gonna sit out here for hours and hours and hours. I need to go home and take a nap. I'm getting, getting kinda tired. Uh, I mean, it was good. It was a good trip though. I mean, it was a double, I didn't limit out. I should have. I mean, you can sit here and make all excuses you want, but like, 
definitely had multiple, multiple, multiple opportunities to, to shoot two more ducks. Um, so, but it is what it is. So here's, here's what we got cooking. Okay. So here are, here are the birds. We got four of them and they're four different species. So starting with this guy, this is the Oweegian. So you got that white belly chest. That's how you usually can tell. Once they're all plumed out, they'll have a little cotton top thing up there. And they've got a little bit of that green hue on their wing. So we got a widgeon. And then right here, this is the old Gadwell. So this guy is similar to, I always think that they're similar to a female mallard, a Susie. They're, they're, they're different, but they look fairly similar, except they've got that white chest um, as well. Their beak, I know, is not quite as orange. It's got that black on it, and then it's got that little bit of brown right there. So that's the old, uh, that's the old gaddy. And then this is the first one, the old penny. This is the pintail. It is a female, unfortunately, but I'll take it. I'll take what I can get. Um, still a beautiful bird, little penny. First big duck of the year was a pintail. I love pintails. It's probably, probably one of my favorite. You could say, I mean, a green-headed mallard is tough to beat, but a, a, something about a bull pintail, you know, with a big long sprig, just freaking sick. And then we've got a green wing, which is this my first green wing teal of the season as well. So we got a green wing teal, got a gaddy, we got a widgeon, we got a pintail. So four is not bad. I'm not going to turn this into a catch. I'm sure this video is plenty long, a lot of BS going on. Um, but obviously clean them, throw it in the freezer. And uh, I, I think my next batch of waterfowl, I'm going to do jerky, a big batch of jerky. So I'll save these guys for now. Um, maybe the next hunt, um, I'll take those birds from that and do one big jerky uh, making session. So if you guys want to see that, let me know in the comment section down below. We're, but remember, if you guys want any duck gear, anything at all, whether it's the calls, the hats, it's the hoodies, it's these sick vests, whatever it might be, it'll be linked down below. And if you guys want to have a chance to win the tank, the 8x8 amphibious vehicle that you always see me running around the farm, I am giving that thing away. And all you got to do is click the link down below and sign up for the Ducks t-shirt of the month. Every month that you are signed up is an entry. So if you guys want a chance to win that, click the link down below. It's on the Ducks, Ducks website. Otherwise, anything else you want on the website, 10% off your entire purchase using promo code Flair. I will catch you guys on the next one. I'm going to head out and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace.